but we'll sh we'll shuffle over here to make that second camera having been worth having been set up. Ben Worth? Is he Mary Worth's cousin? I don't know. Here is a film that I've seen before. If you are somebody who wallows in the darker depths of the uh, budget video, public domain video tide pool, you've probably seen this or maybe even heard of it. Or if you were in video stores back in the 80s, you would remember the box cover like I did. This is a film that stars James Earl Jones and Jose Ferrer and Martin Cove and Deborah Shelton and Lydia Cornell and probably other people you would recognize, set against the backdrop of a, just a gorgeous sun-bleached period of time in Greece in the early 80s. Something's not cool in Greece in the early 80s. There's something taking people. There are strange rituals and ancient rites and Jose Ferrer, who, you know, I don't think would turn down many roles at that period in his life. And something underwater is taking people out. Who will survive? The Blood Tide. That was a newly created trailer for a film from 1981, 82. And uh, generally, I don't care for newly created trailers because they feel new, they don't feel authentic to me. And I like the style of older trailers, uh, but that one is important to me because it shows you how good this movie looks. The way I first heard about this is it's a film that I used to do a horror host show, which still airs on this channel, um, Cheshire TV, called Saturday Fright Special. And we ran horror movies hosted by a Werewolf with an impeccable sense of rhythm and style. And they were all public domain. The only way we could run a movie was if it was not uh, currently under copyright. So we got some, some from every decade. The closer to the present day you got, the fewer you'd had to work with. And this was one of the more recent films, recent, we could work with at the time. And the transfer was terrible. The transfer we used on this show was from the old VHS. So it looked as good as a tape does. And now tape, I don't, caught into the notion that VHS immediately is the worst quality possible. It's not as good as what we have now, but it was okay at times, especially for the day. It was better than broadcast. Um, but some of the, the ways they transferred films, they were very dark, they were murky, uh, detail was lost in the shadow. You know, if somebody had light brown hair, it might look black in the old video transfer. So I was used to that. And part of my enjoyment of this film, of this Arrow video edition of Blood Tide was how beautiful it looks. Now, if you've never seen the old transfer, you're gonna look at this movie and go, wow, this looks beautiful. If you've seen the old transfer, it looks 10 times as beautiful because it's such a wide gap from how terrible this used to look. Um, this is really nicely shot. Like again, for a relatively low budget movie with uh, kind of B-level stars in the early 80s that never got a huge release, it's gorgeous. Um, the technical consultant on this was Brian Trenchard Smith, which is very interesting to me. He's an Australian director who did um, Stunt Rock and um, Man from Hong Kong and Turkey Shoot and a lot of Australian exploitation action movies that were quite good. Um, interesting to see his name attached to this. But uh, bigger stars than you would expect for a film that's this tiny. Again, none are huge, but this is James Earl Jones like while he was still doing Darth Vader. Uh, Lydia Cornell from Too Close for Comfort. It had to be around the time she was doing that show. Uh, Deborah Shelton, I think just before she started doing uh, Dallas. That might have been a little later in the decade. Um, Deborah Shelton uh, in this film um, sings, wrote and sings the end theme song, which I was kind of impressed. I, I saw the name go by and I'm like, wow, it's actually pretty good. Um, Allow me to consult my notes. I take notes when I know I'm not gonna talk about the film for a little while. What did I wanna say? Oh, there is a wonderful flying cat jump scare in this film. Now, you know it's like a cinematic trope where somebody's in a spooky house with a flashlight and you get a wow and a cat jumps out, but it's a special kind of jump scare when you see a shot of the cat just flying through the air as somebody is trying to do something. Sweet Sugar is a film that has multiple flying cat jump scares, if you ever look that one up. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome has that out. Uh, let's see, d d d d sorry. Um, so what is this movie about? So the, it's, it's Martin Cove, and uh, the actress whose name escapes me, but she played, um, what was it? She played Mary Louise Weller. She played Mandy Peppa, Mandy Peppa, one of the sorority girls in uh, Animal House. They're on a boat, and James Earl Jones has been there studying some kind of weird phenomenon for a long time, and Deborah Shelton is sort of like possessed by some local spirit or ancient something. There's a lot of supernatural hoodoo going on. And uh, Martin Cove is, and, and his, his lady are trying to, Mary Louise Weller, are trying to figure out what's going on and survive it. So ultimately there's like a monster underwater that you see. And to me, the only real demerit for this film is that the monster looks pretty cheap, like a rubber suit, like a rubber mask. The monster looks terrible, but other than that, the atmosphere is great, it looks so good. And it's cool to see recognizable faces in this sort of exotic setting. Um, as far as the, the disc goes, 
Again, it's Arrow, it looks amazing. I can't imagine this movie ever looked this good. And I say that, I mean, like, if this got a theatrical release, I cannot believe that the seeing it projected on day one even looked as good as this disc does. Um, there is, I believe there's a, there's a commentary for this film, there's a featurette, there's a very funny interview with the producer, several of whose films have appeared and been released by Arrow Video. Um, it's about, like, a little bit about his story, mostly about how Blood Tide was made, and then a little bit about what he's doing now. He makes documentaries about, about Greece and things like that. And overall, it's just a really nice package, and it's a fun horror movie. I, I kind of liked it for its own merits, you know, and like I said, we ran it on my old show once, and I've seen it before, but I felt like I was watching it for the first time seeing it on this Arrow disc.